Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. In today's video, we're going to be giving you um, a satisfying video of cleaning the engine bay. Now you have to excuse the state of the SAT. I've been on a farm today, so um, it's been well used and well abused. But yeah, today we're going to clean this engine bay. Um, since the engine bolt issue that I had, um, I've been running it with no under tray. Um, and as a result, you can see here, there's a lot of dirt and debris in this engine bay of water splashing up, etc. So we're going to give it a good clean. Now, I thought I'd just show you how I like to do this sort of thing. Um, it's a nice, easy way, um, and that is using WD-40. Um, it's really good at cleaning stuff. Um, it just, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Um, and it protects, it gives a sort of a, a small film on it as well um, and protects it. So um, let me set you guys up and we'll get to work on the engine bay. The first thing we'll do is just pull the engine cover off. Um, although you can't see it, I like to clean all underneath as well. And um, one thing that's good to check while you're here is just check around the injectors one by one just to make sure that you haven't got any leaks um, or what they like to call black death, which is essentially where carbon leaks out of the injector. Um, quite common on a lot of Mercedes, especially our Sprinter um, with that um, 651 engine. Um, it's just, yeah, quite a common thing that the washers can fail and you'll get um, black carbon build up there, but there's absolutely none on mine, which is nice, just a bit of oil that I've spilt last time I filled it up. So um, that's all looking good. We don't often think about where we go in our cars. Uh, we just spend time driving them and using them and uh, finishing with them when we park them up. Um, but when I do jobs like this, I like to take the time to think of all the places I've been since the last time I did this job. Last time I did this was uh, probably 18 months ago, far, far too long ago and um, since then this car has been here, there and everywhere. It's been to the Arctic Circle, uh, we drove from the UK all the way up to the north of Sweden, minus 36 degrees at some points and uh, performed absolutely flawlessly. It's driven us to Heathrow Airport, um, been parked there for over two weeks while we were driving in Spain. It's been um, it's taken us to christenings, it's taken us to weddings, it's taken us to uh, all sorts of places. It's taken me to first days at new jobs. It's taken me, um, it's carried some very important people too. Um, my girlfriend's 90 year old grandmother for that matter, or 89, but she may as well be 90. Um, it's a pretty good effort to get to 89. And uh, yeah, these all these memories that um, cars hold that we often don't even think about and when we see all this dirt and stuff all over them um, we forget where that dirt's come from um, some of this may even be Swedish dust or Dutch dust or dust from the autobahn um, it just gets in everywhere um, and we, we often just wash it away without even thinking about it It's amazing to think that when I bought this car for £1,500 from the auction, um, not a smashed up front bumper, uh, no service history or anything like that. Um, I never thought in three years time and 60,000 miles later it would have done all the things it has done, but um, it's done them all flawlessly. I can't seem to bring myself to sell it, uh, no matter how hard I try, no matter how many new Volvos I drive. Um, I can't seem to part with this car, it was there when I needed it, uh, when I was after my car accident, um, I was in a lot of pain and it was there when I needed it, it was sort of the most comfortable car anyone could have ever ended up with, um, which is what I needed at the time and um, like I said I've used it for so many different things, it's towed um, priceless prototype cars in car trailers, it's um, driven up and down the motorways, it's driven um, up and down Welsh hills and over mountains and it's it's just been absolutely brilliant. I mean we, we have had a couple of breakdowns. Um, we had the auxiliary belt snap just before we left for Sweden. Um, we then had the engine mount bolts shear 
uh, which was actually as a result of not being put back when I uh, properly when I changed the auxiliary belts and uh, you know it's but it's never never failed me it's always done everything I've ever asked it to it's carried tons of gravel in the back of it um, not all at the same time of course it's carried projects uh, for the house wood timber um, stone everything like that and it just seems to manage to do all of these things despite only being a saloon car it's um, managed to be completely practical and obviously it, the dog loves it in the back seat um, on blankets of course to protect the seats but it's just yeah it will do everything it goes off road um, it will tow vehicles that it has no right to tow um, out of ditches it's just it's just a brilliant brilliant car and at 130,000 miles, it's not worth an awful lot. Um, it's probably worth more in sentimental value than it is monetary value. And um, as a result, I want to try and keep it and preserve it and uh, keep this thing going. I can see Mrs. Dion and I carrying or driving home from the hospital with our first child in this car. And um, I can see all sorts of adventures in the future. I can see it being used as a farm vehicle if we ever get some sort of uh, land or anything like that um, towing trailers full of firewood I can see it just being used as a member of the family it'll uh, carry Otto the dog for many years to come um, as long as we can keep it going for and I can see it carrying me to all sorts of different places around the world um, without hopefully any real issues it wasn't the car I was looking for at the time. Um, I was looking for something perhaps a little sportier uh, rather than a, a two-ton Swedish saloon. But um, it came, it came across at the right time um, and it has proven to be a fantastic car. It's obviously fitted with the uh, infamous Volvo D5 engine um, and that's really what's caused me to catch the bug of Volvo I think that engine 205 horsepower um, a standard or 240 in my case five cylinder diesel engine they just don't make engines like this anymore you can't buy a new car with an engine like this uh, it's, it's sort of the end of an era um, it's from a time where cars were built um, properly I mean we, we say that about all older cars um, compared to their newer counterparts but it's true the weight and the heft of this vehicle is something that we won't ever see again um, and I think that's a real shame um, cars are going in a direction that I think a lot of petrol heads aren't perhaps a particular fan of um, and I think it's up to us as petrol heads to try and keep these cars going um, as long as we can I don't think I'll ever buy a new car um, in my lifetime not because I can't afford them but just because I don't like them, um, they don't have the charm and character of older vehicles, uh, especially classic cars, you know, you just, every every dent and scratch or bit of wear on the steering wheel and everything like that tells a story that you just cannot get um, with modern new cars and obviously you can create your own stories uh, with a new car but I think part of the magic of driving it Driving an older car is uh, carrying on the legacy of those who owned it before you did uh, and trying to keep it going as well as you can. The people who previously owned this car um, owned a garage so it was well looked after and it carried their family all the way, all the way around Europe um, on family holidays um, and it was sort of, as it is for me, um, a brilliant sort of stalwart of the family. And you guys are right when you tell me that I don't perhaps look after this car as well as I should. Um, I should keep it cleaner and I should keep it tidier, but life seems to get in the way. It's one of those things where it just, this car is so useful and uh, it just gets used for everything. And because it's so useful, you, you end up doing more things and you, you have left time for to keep it clean. And um, doing, doing jobs like this is where you sort of realize that you need to do it more often um, but don't forget this car is is my channel um, this car is 
recognised by you guys. It's um, become a bit of a sort of icon, I suppose, of um, YouTube Volvos. It's not something I ever thought it would it would become, but um, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely definitely got a legacy. Um, this car in particular, and you know, life's been busy. Um, Mid twenties in the last few years, Mr. The L have bought and I bought a house. Um, I've changed jobs. We've uh, been going on adventures, etc. And uh, unfortunately, recently lost a very good, dear friend of mine. Um, which, to be honest, knocked all of my motivation to do videos out of me. Um, and it was a pretty, pretty hard pill to swallow. But um, it, if anything, it proves to you that life is fragile and we need to make the most of it and we need to treat things that we've got with respect because they may not always be here and the same goes for people as well um, so Mrs. DL will be will be will be going for more cruises spending more time together as a result of that um, we'll be pushing on and um, making the most of our lives uh, where we can because we never know when it might come to an end um, as unfortunately I found out with my friend recently And I want to bring you guys along on these new adventures. We've got plenty, plenty of time to um, fit loads in. We've got different vehicles to adventure in. I want to bring you guys along and I want to film things in a slightly different way. I want to document and share with you um, sort of more of the, the feelings and the emotions about these adventures. Um, I think so far my videos have been pretty sort of sterile and easy to follow and more instructional but I think the world is too much like that now we, we don't have enough of sentimentality and uh, things and feelings so uh, we're going to try and get a bit more of that across uh, the, the joy of ownership, owning these bizarre and unique vehicles um, that I seem to have a penchant for um, and a lot of you blame me for that but actually it's Mrs DL's just as bad she she loves the smart car um, she's the one that wants to be driving it around and getting it going and I think it'll be a, a good little companion for her um, and she sort of grows her dog training business um, but it's handy because she can drive to clients houses um, very very cheaply um, and in a car that starts conversation um, which is something that she really really likes and there's a, uh, a little road that um, I've never seen a car go by in our local town and um, we managed to fit the smart car up there and we had probably a couple of inches to spare either side and uh, a man came out of his house and said this is the first time I've seen a car drive down this road for over 60 years and we said the last time was when uh, they had sort of model T's and all that sort of old Austin 7's and that sort of thing and uh, to see the smile that it brought to his face driving this little car um, up past his house on a road that hadn't been driven up for years um, was was brilliant and uh, I think these cars although they're uh, perhaps overlooked by a lot um, can be appreciated and just people seeing seeing them on the road and being appreciated is is a nice feeling uh, to know that you've made their day And I want to meet you guys, I want to meet more of you guys. Um, it was a truly amazing experience to meet a subscriber in Sweden. Um, something I, I'd never even realised the power of social media, how you could meet these people um, across the world who, who know more about your car than you do or remember, remember more about your car than you do. Um, that was an absolute pleasure. So I want to, I want to meet some of you guys. And, um, get in touch if you if you recognize places I drive or you you think of nearby or even if you're not uh, get in touch and uh, let's let's meet up it'd be great to 
tell some of your guys' stories and see some of your guys' cars and uh, yeah just just to meet the team who uh, support me every day in this YouTube channel it would be lovely to meet you guys and be able to thank you in person um, I really really would appreciate that um, but we're going to carry on reviewing these new Volvos as well because I think it's important that although we, we like to hold on to the past and that's why we drive these P3s we enjoy sort of the way that things used to be I suppose um, we've got to keep an eye on the fact that things are changing and the technology is changing uh, the brand that we follow is changing um, driving this car after getting into a brand new car is is worlds apart um, life is, is changing uh, massively um, and I think for you guys if you know you you're, you're perhaps feeling um, frustrated or you, you you want to have a new car you've fed up of your current car I'd just say take a little time um, get to know it again do some jobs on it yourself um, just clean it up I found that when whenever I wanted to sell cars that I've owned previously once I've given them a wash and service to maintain them um, I suddenly want to keep them and uh, it's uh, we fall in love with cars when they're at their best and unfortunately we tend to sell them once we've neglected them um, and I think just actually giving a car a bit of love um, is always worth always worth doing and it's a far cheaper way of uh, satisfying your sort of car needs than uh, perhaps buying a new car would be but um, yeah we'll uh, finish this video off shortly um, just finishing off I didn't do the whole engine bay in this video but I just wanted to show you guys how simple these jobs are um, and how, how much of a difference you can make uh, for a relatively small um, amount of time and money as well um, which I think is the important thing so um, I'll wrap the video up in a minute with a, with a small outro and I'll just let you guys finish watching me finalise the uh, cleaning um, as we do sort of round the cowl under the bonnet. Okay then, so I don't want to bore you guys doing the whole thing, but you can see what a difference we've managed to make in just a few minutes. Um, now I have managed to uh, get it dirty again, but um, yeah, you can just see how much cleaner that is. And it really didn't take me long, probably 10, 15 minutes. And um, I'll finish it off later today. But um, yeah, really, really handy thing to know just how good this is at cleaning things especially black plastic you really don't need to spend loads of money on black plastic products this will do um just buy a big tray can for the same thing you can buy those sort of chemicals for and um they'll last this will last you for years so uh yeah thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe let me know your thoughts and i'll see you next video cheers